Hi guys, it's Jamie here and I realise it has been a really, really long time since I've done any kind of video or video tutorial. As some of you know, back in November I started my own Facebook group, I started doing graphic design, I also started having Airbnb stay in my house and I started a part-time job as well. So with trying to learn Photoshop, do daily designs for the Facebook group, do designs for the Espresso Club members of the Kofi shop, do designs just for general release free on Kofi or for a small value deal on Kofi and work and do the Airbnb and have my builder in and out, in and out. I haven't really had time to video any tutorials at all and we're nearly into April. So it's been a good few months. I haven't done a drunk journal tutorial because I thought today to get back into it I do a short and simple art tutorial. I'm so pleased with the result. I'm probably gonna make into a short series with prompts for the Espresso Club members, exclusive videos for them. And hopefully in April, I will find time to do some more junk journal videos. However, if you're looking for very short, well-edited tutorials, there are about 500 on the YouTube channel. You'll find the link either in the description or at the very beginning of the comments, depending on where I put it. So today's tutorial, we're going to be doing this. And I'm going to show you how easy and quick it is to create a simple piece of art. On the desk, we have some vintage photos that I have isolated from their original backgrounds so that they make for easy fussy cuts. These will be put into a folder for Espresso Club members as part of their membership. I'm taking this video right back to basics. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to fussy cut. With the first version, I'm going for a close cut. In other words, I'm cutting slightly inside of the image which avoids any pesky white bit showing so that it's a really, really close cut. You can see from that cutaway that there is some darkness and that's because I'm cutting slightly inside the line. The second way you can fussy cut is actually to leave a thin white border around the image. Now this will give you more of a sticker-like appearance when you've cut the whole thing out. There is absolutely no need to be 100% accurate when doing either of these fussy cuts. So don't get yourself caught up in, oh, my white border's slightly fatter here than on that piece that I've just cut. It really doesn't matter. Remember, all art is viewed at a distance. No one is sitting there with a magnifying glass looking that closely at your work. I've put the two different styles next to each other so you can see the differences. I quite like both, to be honest, and do use both. However, in this series, I am going to be using the close form fussy cut. Because the close form fussy cut doesn't have a border, and I know that this artwork is going to be going against backgrounds, what I want to do is give my little man a border. So on the reverse of the paper, I'm using permanent black ink and going round the edges, slightly pulling in, hoping to catch some of the reverse, in other words, the side that you see. This also does have the benefit that if you do have any pesky white paper core showing from your cutting, which is that inner bit of paper that you sometimes get, it will help to cover that up. Having looked at it, I still want a stronger edge to the, my image, so I'm going to very lightly go round and create a thin, not necessarily regular, black border to my fussy cut. And once I've completed this particular fussy cut, I'm going to take all the pictures that are going into that Espresso Club member folder and fussy cut them all out so they're all prepared. The advantage of doing any kind of mixed media art is it does mean that you can use your scraps. This is just one box of scraps. I actually have another box filled with gel prints as well. And even if you haven't built up a bunch of scraps like I have, you can use packaging. Or... 
junk mail, old envelopes, anything you've got lying around and you can recycle that into backgrounds. You will need a glue. Here I've got some extra heavy gel medium, a big pot of it because I do a lot of art when I've got the time. I also do like to use a glue stick. I don't go for particular brands, I go for whatever is on offer. To my left, you can see my square black art journal. I have two or three of these. Again, I just go for what's on offer and what seems a reasonable price. This is some of the work I did before with the Art Tribe. And here's a page where I've already created a border, which means I'm going to work inside of that. To know the width of that border, I simply used a ruler width from all the edges so I didn't have to do any real measuring and here I am starting the process with trying to choose a piece of scrap for a background for this woman however I'm not overly keen on how that's looking so I'll have a hunt around in my box to see what I can come up with although I didn't intend to use any color in this piece I found a bit of dressmaking pattern and I'm checking out how that's going to look. I quite like that, but I'm not keen on the cartoon from the old magazine. In a way, I just think it's too busy to work with the image. The next thing I pull out of the scrap box was actually a bit of napkin, and I had no intention of using anything girly or feminine, but I quite like the colours in that, so I will be using just the top layer of that napkin. Now I'm just going to quickly tear down this dressmaking pattern so that it fits within that frame that I've already scored out onto the paper. I found a very plain printable, I think that was a background paper from a previous journal and I think that will work quite well with those two other pieces to fill that square that I've created on the page. Therefore, I'm using my gel matte medium to cover completely this scrap of paper and position it to glue into place. And I'm just making sure that it's adhering properly using a piece of plastic. You can use anything. You can even just smooth your hands over it. And now I'm just repeating the whole gluing and sticking with that pattern paper. Because it's more of a tissue paper, I have torn a little of it. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to scrape away that edge. I'm checking roughly where I want my figure to go. Probably work in thirds on this one. So might bring her slightly more over to the right in the future. But it tells me that I need to put down my napkin first. I'm simply going to tear around the design. And now, although I've gone off camera, you can't really see this, I am pulling apart the ply so that I end up with only the top layer, which will give this a semi-transparency when it's placed down because that tissue is very, very thin. I like using napkins in art because they can add interest without you having to be able to draw but you can see the background underneath. Like the dressmaking pattern paper napkin, when it's down to this very thin ply, is very delicate. But you do want to go over the top of the napkin with the gel matte medium, just do it very gently. You will see throughout this tutorial, I often check things for balance and look before moving on to the next stage. I'm debating putting her down, but then I decide I don't like all that blank area to the right of her. Therefore, I'm going to do some mark making before I put her on the page using the end of a toilet roll and my black ink. And this is an experiment. I've never used black ink with the end of a toilet roll. I've only ever used paint before. It seems to be working quite well. So I want to be reasonably random and work my way vertically down that right hand space that I wasn't overly keen on. And now when I put her back on the page, I'm much happier with that balance between the bird and the napkin on the left hand side and the printed black circles on the right hand side. Having looked at this video in the editing process, I probably should have left it at that and just put the woman down. However, at the time, close up, I didn't like the gappiness above her head 
So I took a bit of Amazon packaging and was thinking about filling that blank area up. Of course, that then creates a lack of balance, a uniformity with the rest of the piece, which leads me to add more and more, as you will see in a minute. Maybe it's something in my head that says if I'm doing art, I can't just do three or four pieces and leave it at that. I've got to try and add to it and create different textures and different layers. Whereas actually with this piece, I think I would have been better off stopping where I was at. Back when I was filming this, I thought I'd made a good decision with that piece of packaging. So now I add the woman, but then I'm not happy when she's down again with the balance of the piece. If you ever feel like your piece has lost its balance, return to one of your original backgrounds and repeat it in a slightly different area. Therefore, I'm taking a bit more of this napkin to add some more of it to my picture and I'm going to use it at the top to cover up some of the packaging. Having let the gel matte medium dry for five minutes, gone away, had a sip of coffee, I'm back. I'm still not 100% with this, so I have a very small ink stamp here. I'm just taking some excess off it. It's just a random little pattern. And I'm going to fill in some of this blank space at the bottom. As you can see, I'm knocking it about all over the place, but that really doesn't matter. And actually, I quite like that effect there. However, I still don't particularly like that top right hand side. So I'm taking my ink stamp again and I'm going to fill in that area using that concept of repeating elements to, with fingers crossed or touching wood, get some cohesiveness in the whole piece. To neaten everything up on that art journal page, I'm taking a spare piece of paper and cutting out a picture mount, which I'm gluing over the page so that my modern art piece or art journal piece looks nice and framed and clear. I still want my picture to have a stronger frame, so I have my Stabilo 8046. I'm using my Stabilo along the edge of my black framing and a fine brush that I've dipped in water to help smudge that Stabilo or that black edge, which I do all the way around. And here is the end result. I probably overcomplicated things like I normally do, but it's not too bad for the first video or the first piece of art I've done since Christmas. I will put all the links for everything I've mentioned in the description or in the comments. And I will see you next time.